Lesson number 48 of 2 John, verse 9. Whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. We're going to look at today, we're building to the great capstone of a pyramid, the Lord Jesus Christ. You need the 47 other lessons to build up where we are in, ver in nine verses of one chapter book of vast doctrines that we've learned. And today we're going to look at verse 9, doctrine. That's our subject. Jesus taught and directed his disciples how to live and what to teach. That is doctrine. Doctrine is the subject of being taught. Now, if evolution is not a religion, and doctrine is what's being taught, being taught evolution is a doctrine. A doctrine of history. Doctrine of math. We just apply it to the general sense to, to the Bible and anything to do with religion, but Doctrine is anything that is taught. Children go to school to learn a doctrine. Now, what are your children being doctrinated? Have you heard that expression? What are they being taught? Let's do with the Bible. The apostles abided, lesson 46 and 47, in the Word of God and were sanctified of it. If set apart by the teaching set forth by Jesus Christ. Study to show thyself a proof unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You can have a false doctrine, or you can have the doctrine of Christ. So if John says the doctrine of Christ, he's specific can't be any other doctrine. Paul wrote to the Galatians, I marvel that ye are soon removed from him that called you unto the grace of Christ unto another gospel. They abided once Second John 9, but they left. They abided not. They did not remain. They did not stay. They switched residency. Again, the previous messages. But removed them from the grace of God unto another gospel. Gospel in the Bible is good news, good tidings. Christians can be in the grace of God and then moved out of it. And John tells us the same thing. Whosoever transgresses, now he's writing to save people. He's writing to the elect lady and her children that are saved. He's writing to those that we receive full reward in verse 8. Whosoever transgresses and abides not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. They left. Like the Galatian church. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. Your position as a Christian is either you're in Christ, the doctrine, or you're out of the doctrine of Christ. Uh, Ephesians. The Galatians were not. Saved, but out of fellowship. To them, the doctrine of Christ was like Motel 6. They checked out earlier than the checkout time, death or rapture. Read Galatians 1. The Galatians were deceived by, guess what? Guess who? Deceivers. Deceivers will try to get you to move out sooner than you ought to. Remember what Paul said in his final writings to 2 Timothy chapter 4? I have finished the cause. I have fought the fight. I have reached the point. And I'm still serving God. 
and I'm wanting to see God. Demas, he's forsaken me. And we see in 2 Timothy 4, the example that John says before, those who are still serving, those who went on to other things. With Paul's epistle to the Galatians, after the fact, and 2 John's epistle, warning not to, Paul writes to those who have already done it. John is writing that you don't do it, or maybe you are in the process of doing it, or even you've done it. John is giving warning to the three tenses that we can be in a Christian life. A warning. Paul is already writing to those who have already done wrong. So you can get back. It's not something that you step out and say, all right, you're forever, you know, damned. You're not. You can come back. We, are, we see that deceivers can cause much damage to a Christian's life. Religions, family, friends, even other Christians. The world, career education anything can take you out from the teachings of Christ the doctrine of Christ you are told abide in the doctrine of Christ you are to stay in what Christ has taught you loss of rewards verse 8 loss of rain in the millennium and a loss of grace so when you step outside the doctrine of Christ, it says you have not God. And if you have not God, you're not going to get the peace. You're not going to get the love. You're not going to get the joy. You're not going to get the long suffering. You are not going to get the fruit of the Spirit. And then Christ said, we already saw in the Gospel of John, you're not going to have the love of Christ. You're lacking. And if you die and a rapture happens, while you're outside of Christ, John tells us that you can lose a reward and not obtain any. If you are going to be rewarded by God, step out of the doctrine of Christ. You can lose them. Especially if you fall into religions. Many young, tender Christians are falling into Mormonism and Jehovah Witnessism, if that's a word. And they don't, <coughs> they don't have God. God is not amongst them while they're out of fellowship. By denying the Savior that died for them, Jehovah Witnesses profess that Jesus is not God. The Mormons profess that Jesus stepped out of his writings and wrote another book. Went to North America outside of being seated, ascended to the Father's right hand. That's false teaching. By denying the Savior that, did, that died for them, they received the truth, they're saved, but later turned away from it. John's second epistle is a very serious material. That's why it's in the book. What John wrote to prevent, Paul had to write to undo the damage already completed by deceivers. Had John been able, and I'm, I'm just saying, John been able to write to the Galatians, and the Galatians to get this letter, Paul may not have to undo what was already done. Maybe John knew what happened. But for whatever, whatever reason, God has given us through his holy scriptures, people have fell out of the doctrine of Christ. John, you can follow the doctrine of Christ. And it's a warning to you to remain in the doctrine of Christ. 
It wouldn't be written in here if you couldn't. God wants to reward you. God wants you to give full blessings, full mercy. And yet the free will of man, the run of Satan, the act of deceivers. That's why this is in the Bible. So deceivers deny Jesus Christ as they have another doctrine. They have a teaching of what is being taught that's outside of what Christ taught. No meats. Vegetarian diet. You must speak in tongues. That's nothing that Jesus Christ ever spoke. Do works to be saved. It's not the church age doctrine. The doctrine of Christ equals the gospel. Galatians 1, 6 through 18. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. There's another gospel. Which gospel are you trusting and believing in? Be careful. There's another gospel. That's another warning given to us. The gospel of the Bible, affirmed by the Holy Spirit, Christ died for our sins, was buried according to the Scriptures, and arose from the dead the third day according to the Scriptures. Now, if you guys get on a bicycle and do works, as your gospel, that's not the God, that's another gospel. If you got a Jesus who is not God and strict rules, that's another gospel. If you got to eat and drink a literal body and blood and pray to, to saints and clean statues, that's another gospel. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Turn on your Christian radio, your Christian television, and your Christian book section of the library or the bookstore. They're a dime a dozen plus tax. But though we the apostles, or an angel, alone I. I've seen this angel while eating pasta. Michael the archangel came and spoke. If your religion is centered about what an angel said, though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel, other than Christ died for our sins, was buried according to the scriptures, arose again the third day according to the scriptures, unto you that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Religions are accursed. And the man that comes to your door with religion is a curse. According to Paul, Galatians 1, 6 through 8. That man that's accursed, he may be a Christian. He has not God, 2 John 9. He doesn't lose his soul, but when he's tried at the judgment seat of Christ and they're burnt up, wood, hay, or stubble, that's a cursed life for all eternity. I don't know if there's, I don't think there's envy in heaven, but how do you walk around in heaven not having crowns when other people are having crowns and because of loss of your crowns, you have brought others to be deceived and they lost their crowns? What do you do when those who do get a millennial reign? Where, do you, where are you? Read that. Read what? Removed. 
another gospel, trouble, free vert, a curse. Are those words you want to put on a job application, on your resume? Is that how you want to be described at the next uh, dinner at the workplace as we lift Joe Smo up? And Joe Smo, he's removed another gospel, troubler, perverter, acute. Is that what you want the words to describe your life? The Bible says that Christians get a new name. How would you like to have a name called removed? Will Saint Removed come up? How about Saint Trouble? How about getting a new... Listen, your name may be based upon your conduct and your character as a Christian. How would you like to have the name Pervert? And you don't have to look at pornography. You don't have to be involved in the sex traffic. But if you're perverting Christians and people from the doctrine of Christ, you're a pervert. You are a Bible pervert. How'd you like to carry that name for all eternity? If our new name is based upon our character, I'm saying. It may not be. I like John Bunyan's book there. Paul, Paul Bunyan, you're going to get John and Paul Bunyan. When he names his character by the characters who they are. Now that book, it's not Bible, but I believe it's inspired. Is it possible for us to get the name of our conduct on this heaven, on this earth, in heaven? I sure wouldn't want the name as pervert. I sure not would not want to explain to the to the saints in heaven. Why did God name you pervert? And I sure wouldn't want the name pervert because I perverted other people from Christ, at least. I mean, no, I was going to say something, but it wouldn't sound right. Words. Those are serious and not something encouraging. They don't encourage you to win souls for Christ. Matter of fact, they discourage. They get you out of the Bible, maybe into a false Bible. They get you into church service that's not real. There are words that are affixed to perverts in modern Bibles perverted my modern Bible they add they subtract and they footnote the Bible that's a perversion of scripture how'd you like to change the Bible the very words that God wrote and be called a Bible pervert you see I already said they are the fruits of deceivers what are the fruits removed another gospel trouble prevert accursed Perversion of the Bible are the fruits of, de of deceivers. I bet you those taste real good. I think I'd rather have a rotten banana, uh, worm infested apple, instead of being a fruit of deceiver when it comes to Christians and non Christians. I would never want to turn a lost man into hell. And I would never want to turn a saved man into destruction. These are these are these are not the words you want associated with your name. How does that match the seed? The Roman Catholic Papa, the, the Pope, Muhammad, Joseph Smith. All claim to have angelic beings conversation with them. And many religions have some kind of angelic form that came and visited them. Though, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel, their angels will point to a man. Those angels will point to another book. Those angels will point to outside the resurrected Jesus Christ. Do they or do they not? With, with the Gabriel and Michael that visited Allah and Muhammad. Did that angel proclaim that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, who is God? And the only Savior of the world, that, that the only name of Jesus Christ is the only name that Acts 4.12 says that whereby you must be saved. Is that the angel that brought it? What about the angel Bologna that came to the Mormons? 
No, he's too busy telling you to marry multiple wives. He told you that angel came to North America. Scripture? Oh, don't don't go with their book. They don't even read their own book anymore. The conversation denies what the Bible declares and the instruction about Jesus Christ. Find me where you're supposed to do hocus pocus and eat the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'll show you passages where you're not supposed to eat flesh and you're not to drink blood. But John chapter 6 said, yeah, but if the Bible says you're not to eat blood in any dispensation, you got a contradiction. And that's wrong. You talk about the contradictions of the Bible. The King James Bible has contradictions. What about eating blood when the Bible tells you outright you're not to do it? Want to continue? The Catholic Church has angels everywhere. And they got wings and they look like women. Muhammad alleged it was Gabriel. That's Gabriel. And Mr. Smith assumed it was Morari or Bologna. I forget. Can't be Bologna because that's, that's not kosher. Those angels do not communicate the gospel, the doctrine, the teachings of Christ. Really? When did Paul have golden plates? When did John have these big sunglasses? Angels cannot proclaim the gospel in this age. Check out Acts chapter 10. The angel instructed Cornelius, go get Peter. An angel cannot preach the gospel. He can come to, yeah. Listen, ent entertain angels whereby it says in Hebrew 13. 12 or 13. I'm not saying angels can't come, but I am saying an angel cannot and will not preach the gospel. He doesn't know what the gospel is. He doesn't have blood. He has no idea what it is to be redeemed and bought. He's When an angel sins, the third of the angels of Satan, there's no redemption for them. They have sinned and will go into hell. There's no way they can be bought under the blood of Jesus Christ. And that angel that came in Acts chapter 10 says, go get a man. Go get a Christian. Check it out. Paul told the Galatians about another gospel. And they were lively in it. And that other gospel was making them detached from God. Why would there be the warning? Now let's go to 2 Corinthians 11.4. Now you see how these lessons are bringing us into the gospel. They're bringing us into the Bible. We are checking scripture with scripture. John, when he writes 2 John, he has a book that is full of milk, honey, bread, sugar, salt, and meat. It's a nutritious book to study, isn't it? Go back and get the other lessons now. Where are we? Let's, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 4. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, uh -oh. what do you say in Galatians? But if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel, so there's another gospel. If any cometh preaches another Jesus. 2 Corinthians 11.4 says there's another Jesus out there. There's a Jesus you can eat. There's a Jesus who's not God. There's a Jesus that lives in Utah. There are plenty of cult Jesuses. There's a whole bunch of Mexican men running around with Jesus. There's the Holy Jesus. There's the... Oh, uh, how's this said again? Uh, Yisabwe? Uh, forgive me for not knowing the Hebrew. Uh, no, no, the, the Hebrew Jesus. 
Then there's my dear sweet Jesus, my lovely Jesus. There's all kinds of Jesuses. Again, there are a dime a dozen plus texts. You better have the right Jesus. Satan has all kinds of Jesuses. God has one. Jesus said of the Bible, the scriptural Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me, but, I mean, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me. How's that? So, I don't know if I'm going to stop there. There's another gospel. Works is not the gospel of this age. Membership is not the works of this age. Like, you know, to these secret organizations. That's not the way of salvation. I got a ring. So what? When you're dead in the ground, that ring is still going to be there. You can't carry it off into eternity. Job said, naked I came in this world and naked shall I return. So the warning is not only the doctrine, the teachings of Christ, and the teaching of deceivers, but there's other Jesuses. There's other Gospels. A warning. Look, let's read more. Verse 4, whom we have not preached. The Jesus buried be the Jesus that Paul preached. Or if you have received another spirit, a Holy Spirit that makes you speak tang tongues, tang, makes you speak tongues and waddle on the floor and start doing a holy dance and blah, 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 blah. That ain't the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will make you profess Jesus Christ. He will not speak of himself and the fruits that he has denies of what you're doing in your charismatic garbage church. Only ones that waddled down on the ground in their foams were the ones that were possessed with devils. Get your Bible. Those that fell down was the ones that were the soldiers in the garden. Professed, Are you Jesus? Boom. Went down and they went. Alright. Or have you received another spirit which you have not received? You can receive a false spirit. Proclaiming to be the Holy Spirit. Warning number three, false doctrine, false Jesus, and a false spirit. Let's keep going. Or another gospel, exactly what he told the Galatians, not accepted. So we got four things. We got doctrine, the teaching of Christ or not Christ, the gospel. Of Christ or not Christ. Jesus. Either Jesus Christ or another Christ. A spirit. Either the Holy Spirit or another spirit. And again, we go back to the gospel. Isn't that serious? That the fact is that there are people out there who think they're saved. Think they're going to go through the gate through Peter and all that other nonsense. Or go through whatever they, their church and what their religion teaches. That they're going to be safe from the wrath of God. Look what John said. John chapter 3. Look what John chapter 3 says. Verse 36. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. The Son. There's plenty of sons out there. Been a lot of sons since Cain and Abel. You better have the right Son. He that believeth not on the Son shall not see life but the wrath of god abiding upon and if you got the wrong doctrine and you're lost you got the wrong gospel and you're lost you got the wrong spirit and you're lost you got the wrong gospel did i say gospel i mean jesus and you're lost you're going to get the lake of fire you're going to get the wrath of god now if you're saved you got the wrong doctrine you're worshiping now the wrong jesus you've got the wrong spirit inside you and you got the wrong gospel though you were right at one time and you turned totally wrong you turned away from the doctrine of Christ you don't have God you're going to suffer a loss 2nd John 8 and 9 
You see how serious it can It could be damning a man who thinks he's right into hell forever. A lake of fire. Or it can put a man who's saved thinking he's doing what God wants him to do and end up with a bald head and ashes at the judgment seat of Christ. Both these paths of faults lies to destruction. Some for their souls, some for their works. Paul told the Galatians about another gospel. And they're out there, dime a dozen. That's that's the word today. Dime a dozen plus tax. They were lively in it. They were active in this other gospel. And that another gospel, the other gospel, was making them detached from God. And they thought they're serving God. And John says, if you're not abiding in the doctrine of Christ, you have not God. The Galatians lost God. And they didn't even know it. They lost God, the big G, for a small G. And they didn't even know it. And we saw that in 1 Corinthians 11, 4. Danger is when you go for a false or rather the truth that's why jesus said i am the way the truth john 8 44 says the liar is satan that false jesus that false doctrine that false spirit that false gospel is of the liar john 8 44 the father which kills so Jesus said, I am the way, the only Jesus, the truth, and the life. You can be saved and be dead to God and eternal rewards. You'll get new Jerusalem, but you'll get no rewards and crowns. Second John, verse 8 and 9. Um. Okay, we've gone through this. We've gone through the religions. And I said, Acts 4.12, only one name whereby you must be saved. And you may believe on that one name. You may be believed on the right Jesus, the right gospel, the right doctrine, and then fall away. Demas never lost his soul. But he lost plenty more. Another spirit. Yes, there is a spirit out there that recommends men and women to speak in an unidentifying tongue. That's nonsense. Who would come up with the idea? Oh, hey, you got it. Hey, I got a bumblebee in my mouth and just stung my whole everywhere. Oh, okay. Thought you were talking in tongues. Only an idiot would, would identify themselves with this garbage. And you can tell them I said they're idiots and garbage. Quote me. Because they don't know their Bible. Because tongues in the Bible is a language. If I were to start speaking Polish, my native language, which I, I don't know. I couldn't speak Polish if I wanted to. But if I started speaking Polish to you right now, that would be tongues. And I would need an interpreter for you to understand what I'm saying in Polish. If somebody started, it was right here in my house, started speaking Spanish, that's tongues to me. I would need an interpreter or press one. The same spirit that claims to heal people, and God does heal, but not all. What's wrong with that spirit? Why can't these faith heroes? In the spirit of God walk into hospitals why do you always see them in a tent ministry and not a hospital ministry why don't they stop ambulances instead of lawyers 
Why don't they put the lawyers out of business so we don't see any more lawyer ads on the television by going to a car accident and be healed and the cars and the people get healed and drive off? Why are there hospital beds with Holy Spirit filled healers? Why? Explain that to me. Because we are under a sin-cursed world. The only reason why those people fall down on that stage is because when that guy swings his jacket, he probably forgot his right guard. Underarm older is probably knocking him down. It is a spirit that wants to be worshipped and reverenced more than Jesus Christ. That's not the Holy Spirit. Go read John chapter 14 and find out how Jesus Christ ascribed and described the Holy Spirit. He's going to praise and remember Jesus Christ above him. The Holy Spirit does not want reverence. This Holy Spirit does. This Holy Spirit wants to show. Uh, my friend, that was Satan, Isaiah 14. Satan wanted to show. Satan wanted all the worship. Satan wanted the attention, not the Holy Spirit of the Bible. It's another spirit and not God. This spirit, this Jesus, this gospel is a commission of deceivers that seduce, there's another good word, Christians. Now, what is the doctrine of Christ? Would be a great place to stop. Leave you hanging. But right now, we're in 36 minutes. And we're going to take another bite. And I hope for those who are newly saved, I hope it's not too much of a bite. I hope you come back in here. I hope it's not going to be too much of a bite. It may be. You might want to listen next time with pen and paper and write notes and pray. Because now we're going to get you from salvation. You're out of hell. You are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. You've been to Calvary and you're walking to glory. Now, what is that teaching of Christ? And as I said, the Mormons, the Jehovah Witnesses, the Islam is out to get you young lamb. And pastors ain't protecting you. They're out to get you and devour you. There are wolves in sheep's clothing, Jesus said. I'm trying to say, I'm trying to grow you as a lamb. I'm trying to put some fat on you and say, growing so that you will, hey, you are a bad wolf. Get away from me. I don't want you to fall into deception. And I've seen too many pastors let the sheep go on. I don't even know where half my brethren are today. And I don't think the pastors care either, do they? I care. I want you to grow. So, Lesson 49, Lord willing, next week will be, What is the Gospel or the Doctrine of Christ? I hope you, I don't want to sound like a tough, but I hope you'll come and listen. I hope you'll go back and get to 48 other messages. Some of them, are, you're going to have to search for them. Second John, because the Satan's been out there. He's messed with some of these places, and he's messed with those places. Some of them have been deleted. Some of them I had to throw somewhere else, and... YouTube, um, SoundCloud, pray I can continue to, to afford that, keep because it, it's live, it's going, uh, the Sermon Network and stuff, you're just going to have to look for them. I think God has made it so if you want this information, you're going to have to go dig for it. And if you go digging for it, it shows that you want to learn, you want to know, and God will bless you. Contact me, email, whatever. If I can help you in any way, prayers or anything, I'm doing these lessons for you to grow. And we're in a serious lesson now. We have come to another stop. I'll let you go get some refreshments. I'll let you go get, you know, rest a little bit before we get back on the train. The learning. It's all been Bible. <laughs>